Excited to introduce uh, Coach White's first year as defensive coordinator here uh, for first media day. Uh, again, appreciate everybody being out here, and we'll throw it for questions. Brandon, that's just amazing. Cash performance. You have told him something about the culture you lost with the cash structure, and so the next year you change your defense a little bit to bring the rush from other areas. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit? What do you think we're talking about? Yeah, back in. 2014, so Rob Mathis in 2013 led the NFL in sacks, had 19 and a half, you know, really excited about him coming back. Well, he had an injury in the offseason, and so in 2014, we had to figure out a way to still get pressure. And we ended up having more sacks in 2014 than we did in 2013, but it wasn't one guy having them. We, we had it sort of dispersed uh, throughout the defense. You know, the, the guy that led the team in sacks that year, his his number was six and a half. So you do, you can do the math. Uh, you know, we but we had five, six, seven guys that had three plus sacks. So we, we tried to bring it from everywhere, caused a little bit of confusion. And, uh, you know, we'll see, uh, you know, what we can do here, you know, to have sort of those same results. Obviously, you can't replace Josh Allen, but how do you start to kind of fill in maybe with two or three guys to get that pass rush to help out a younger uh, defensive back? No, that's a that's a great question. You can't replace Josh, and we know that. Everybody knows that, that Josh was a, a real special talent, one of those generational-type players. Uh, what we've got to do now is – find the next one is it's find the the next guy that's going to elevate his game the thing that made josh so good he went from seven sacks seven sacks to 17. well you have a guy like jamar watson you know boog he had three his freshman year you know five last year and hopefully we can continue to push that number so that's a guy that we're going to lean heavily on you know getting josh pascal back that's going to be huge and then I'm really looking forward to seeing our interior pass rush really push their uh, their sack numbers and their hurries and their pressures, and we're going to try to affect a lot with those guys because, you know, when you have T.J. Carter and Calvin Taylor and, and Q, and then you, you bring in a, a Looney and a Phil Hoskins, I mean, we should be able to have some success interiorly. And then what, what I – when I look out there and I see guys like Cash and Square and Oates and Jamin, inside linebackers that can blitz and cause all kinds of issues. And a lot of times those inside linebackers are going to be matched up on running backs. And those are one-on-one -on -one situations that we're anticipating winning. And we need to win if we're going to be successful. Uh, so we're going to put some, you know, put some weight on their shoulders to go win those one-on-ones. Uh, and then we'll see who elevates. Now, obviously... You know, we'd love to do as much four-man rushing coverage to protect the back end. Uh, but, you know, there are going to be downs that, that they just have to, to step up and elevate. And we talk about it all the time on defense. Somebody on every down has to wear the hat. They're going to have the tough down. And what you want to do is you want to put the tough down more often than not on the guys – you know, that are experienced or that can wear that hat. But there's going to be times within a game that everybody, know how, no matter how young you are, no matter how experienced you are, you're going to have to wear the hat on that down, you know, and you're going to have to rise to the occasion. Brad, right, what did you like about the three outside linebackers you signed from the bowl last year? And did Jared Casey separate himself from the left You know, I, I, I'm really, really excited about the young guys that we have. Um, you know, there's the, the three from Louisville. And what we're actually going to do is, you know, Sean Kell is going to actually start inside. So we'll have, you know, Casey and Weaver on the outside. Uh, we've got, you know, Katie McDaniels that we also signed, you know, who's going to going to be outside as well. So we've got some really young talent that I'm excited to see. Weaver's obviously, I mean, excuse me, Jared's obviously a, a step ahead coming in spring. So he, he, knows the terminology a little bit better. It'll be a little bit cleaner early. Um, but we're going to see what those guys can do. And it, we're going to put the best 11 on the field. And if it's a freshman, if it's a senior, if you're one of the best 11, you know what to do in that situation, in that package, you're going to be on the field. If you don't, or we, we don't, if you're a 50-50 guy, if, if you know it sometimes, you don't know it others, you know, that's, for me, 
knowledge is power, and the guys that know it are going to be the guys that play. But we have to do a good job as a coaching staff to make sure we don't overwhelm them. You get, you give them a package that they can play fast, and then let their athletic ability show. What did you see from MJ Devonshire in the recruiting process, and what do you think he can do for you in the secondary? He, MJ's got terrific speed. Everybody knows, you know, he's a sprint champion there uh, in the state of Pennsylvania, um, and he's got smooth hips. He's a great athlete. Uh, so he's going to be another one of those guys, you know, a young guy that, you know, he's going to be thrown in the fire, and we'll see what he can do. You know, in that secondary, we don't know who's going to be the starter. I, I can't tell you right now, come August 31st, who's going to be running out there. Now, there are some guys that, uh, you know, as you start the, the preseason, you have to have, you know, a depth chart. But it's in pencil, and that could change daily. It could change weekly. It can change as the scrimmages. When the lights go on, because it's, it's one thing to do it in practice. It's another thing to do it in a scrimmage. Because that's a little bit, it, it's a heightened uh, sense of urgency. And then at the end of the day, when it goes to game time, it's an entirely different level. And so you may see throughout the season some things get, you know, shuffled around. But we'll find the best 11. And it may not be the same 11 in every personnel group. We're going to find in the right situation. I, you know, we've, we talk to our guys all the time. Find a spot, find a role on this team, carve it out, find your niche, and then become a master at that role. And then if you become a master at that role and you gain confidence both in your teammates and the coaching staff, then you'll see your role expand. During the years of coaching, like what, schematically to help those young guys, obviously different skill sets for different players as you bring them in and out. But through your experience, what do you do to take that pressure off of a group that you know is going to be really inexperienced? We're going to have to do a great job of keeping it simple for us, but complex for an offense. We need them to have to go through checks. They make them work without doing a lot of putting a lot on our guys' plates. So we'll we'll be multiple in in some regards that way. Things that uh, I'll ask older guys to do the disguise part, let the younger guys, you know, maybe be a little bit more stagnant. Um, and then because the older guys right now, and we know that we've got a good experienced D line. We know we've got inside backers, you know, Boogs played, uh, you know, was a full-time starter last year and played a significant amount as a retro freshman. So those guys have to carry a little bit more during a down, whether it's communication, whether it's disguise, and let the, the younger guys settle in. And then once they get comfortable, then then we can start expanding their package. Brad, what are your expectations for Moses? You know, with – you know, with the with the injury to Devontae, you know, Mo's Mo's role sort of uh, I say increased, but he's you know, he's gonna be have to be a person right now that uh, you know, as he goes through this camp, he's a guy that needs to be ready to go in the game. And uh, you know, again I'm I'm excited about what, what Yusuf can do. You know, he had a great uh, spring. Uh, but right now at that at that safety spot, you know, we're still looking at bodies, but um, You know Moe's gonna be that guy that that's getting some reps with his second team, you know, and You're one injury away, and so he's got to be able to Learn the defense, you know, it was nice to get him again uh, Kind of like Jared Casey in the spring uh, So this won't be all new when he steps on the field uh, this afternoon uh, so hopefully things slow down a little bit quicker for him than some others. And, you know, you saw it in the in the spring that he's not afraid to hit. You know, he's a guy that will come down, he'll strike you. Uh, he's a really good tackler. You know, it's just knowing what to do, where to be, what checks to make, because we ask our safeties to, to handle, uh, you know, quite a bit in terms of communication. And so he'll have to, to pick that up. Brad, you're, um, you're an impact on the outside pass for us with Josh and Boogie and those guys. I don't think anybody missed that this past season. Can you talk about this offseason? How has your involvement with the interior defensive line 
uh, has that increased? Have you been more hands-on involved with those guys to try and bring some of those, you know, hand rush moves and packages to their game? Yeah, well, yes, in, the, in, in terms of the interaction. It, when, when you step up to the coordinator role, you get to interact with all the position groups more than just yours, which is which is always a, a fun experience. And, you know, especially for me, I, I, I like getting to know all of them on a you know a personal level. But in terms of the pass rush, you know, Coach LeBlanc does a great job with those guys. I think we'll be uh, we will work a little bit more uh, as a unit. So when it gets into those third down situations, you know, maybe there's a little bit more gel there uh, as, you know, in the past where it was more a little bit more two distinct units, uh, you know, an outside and inside. I think uh, we're going to have a real collective pass rush idea. Uh, but Coach LeBlanc does a, a great job with those guys. And you, you saw that, you know, Calvin Taylor's, you know, emergence last year. And uh, I think T.J. Carter's, you know, in has positioned himself to have one of those breakout years. Um, and when we let those guys get used to each other and pass rush together, they're going to go through individual drills together on third down days. Um, it's hard. You never really have enough individual. I know when I first got here, you know, Coach Stoops touched on it. The outside backers in a 3-4 defense, there's so much that they have to do in terms of they have to be able to rush, they have to be able to set edges, they have to be able to cover. And so it gets hard to get it all in, and you need to try to take as much individual time as you can get with those guys. But we're not going to do it at the sacrifice of gelling that front four unit. And so we will uh, work together quite a bit, uh, especially you know right now. And then when we get into season on third down days, so that when we get to third down, that's where we need to win. We, we have got to win uh, and be efficient on third down. I know everybody talks about it. I know Coach Grant probably talked about it offensively, being efficient. And if we can eliminate long drives, and long drives usually happen because they've converted on one or two or three third down situations. Uh, if we can get off the field there, I think we'll be in much better shape this year. Steve Young said at the NFL level, the 3-4 is the toughest defense to prepare for. And he's a pretty smart guy. How difficult is it to play that proficiently at the college level? Because I know so much goes into that. It, it, I think it is one of those defenses that gives offenses problems because you can basically create three different defenses at once where most teams, if you're a 4-3 defense, you're an over defense or you're an under defense, and we'll, we won't get into the, to the nitty-gritty of that. But an offense knows where you're going to be, so they can create their leverage points, they can create their double teams. When you're in an odd front defense like a 3-4, and we, we play three up front, we can stay in that situation, which creates its own problems for offenses, or we can create under and over very quickly. And so from an offensive standpoint, it just it makes it hard to target. Uh, you know, in the run game, it, it causes some confusion for a quarterback in terms of which way are they're coming because we're so balanced, um, you know, formationally. Uh, it's harder to identify than if you were in, say, a 4-3 defense. But with that, then it's, hey, why doesn't everybody just run a 3-4? There are, again, to the, to the point about the outside backers, you know, it takes that much more teaching for those guys because you're going to put a lot on their plate. And you're going to put a lot on those interior D linemen. You know, and you can see we look, you know, all the credit goes to our strength and conditioning staff in terms of, we look the part to play those four eyes in our defense. And you have to you have to be big, strong, rugged, it's hot, it's steamy in there, every down, and that's not for everybody. 
and you've got to find three of those guys. Not just if you're in a 4-3, you got to find two guys that can play interiorly, and then you got two DNs that can go. We talk about you're playing in the city or you're playing in the suburbs. And, you know, we've got to have three playing in the city in a 3-4 defense. I mean, and, and I, I tell the outside backers all the time, I said, hey, you've got the good life out there. You know, <laughs> you got all kinds of space. You've got time. The tackle will set. Those guys, you know, in our three, four, the, our two, four eyes and our nose, things happen quick. And they're playing with, against big bodies, especially in this league. And we talk about you have to win up front in this league. Um, and, you know, I feel strongly about what Coach LeBlanc's done with that group. They've worked hard this off season, And we're going we're gonna to rely on those guys heavily. Folks, oh, we've, got to, oh, we've got to get out to uh, finish up outside. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome.